This is the new Defender. Now let's be honest, redesigning a great British icon is never going to be easy. So in this video, I'm going to be making sure that Land Rover hasn't cocked it up. I'm going to start this review by seeing what this new Defender is like to drive off-road. Because after all, if you can't do this, what the hell is the point? Now I've got the gearbox in low range mode. I have the car's off-road program in rock crawl. I'm going to drive it over this obstacle, which is known as chassis articulation. A lot of people have been complaining that, oh no, the new Defender, it doesn't have a traditional leather frame chassis. It doesn't matter. The monocoque chassis on this car is stiffer than any other chassis Land Rover has ever made, and that helps when you're off-roading. Some other people have complained the fact that it doesn't have rigid axles. Yet again, it doesn't matter that it's got all-round independent suspension because the travel of the independent suspension is 500 millimetres, which is a lot. Then when you combine it with the fact you've got this clever electronic program which stops the wheels in the air spinning up, and this particular vehicle has the optional rear mechanical differential which also stops the rear wheels spinning up and gives you constant traction, you can get over anything that the old Defender can and more. Let's do something more difficult. Now, one of the great things about the fact that the chassis is like that of a normal car rather than a traditional ladder frame is that ladder frame chassis off-roaders, when you're going over surfaces such as this with potholes and uneven, you get all the vibrations coming straight through into the cabin that it's almost like you're sat on a sex toy. <laughs> Whereas this, it's much smoother. I'm not getting quite so aroused. <laughs> but it's smoother. Listen, I promise never ever to use the word aroused in a video ever again. I can illustrate though that I'm not getting vibrated too much by drinking from this precariously full large bottle of water while hooning down this track. So, mm -mm. Look at that, no spillage. If I'd have been in the old Defender, that would have been all down me like I just dribbled over myself and that wouldn't look good. The 110 version of the new Defender comes with air suspension as standard and it's really good for off-roading because you can raise up the ride height if you're about to tackle an obstacle where you think you might bottom out. You can raise it up by a maximum of 145 millimetres. You end up with a total ground clearance of 291 millimetres, which is a lot. To put it into perspective, the old Defender had 250 millimetres of ground clearance a Jeep Wrangler has about 250, a Land Cruiser Prado has about 210. So now I can get and tackle that horrible obstacle there. I can see where other vehicles have bottomed out. I'm going to put the terrain response system into mud and ruts. So the traction control should then keep me moving, even though it's very slippery. This is my looking over the bonnet face. I don't want to catch the wings because they do stick out quite a bit on this. I'm not bottoming out. This is doing a great job. <laughs> I can hit the side of the car just touching. I'm sure some other off-roaders might have found that a little bit tricky. Not this though. I tell you what, an extra four centimetres over the competition, like the Jeep Wrangler, so about that much, that can make all the difference. This new Defender is about 10 centimetres longer between the front and rear wheels than a Discovery, yet it can cope with going over steeper hills because it's got what's known as a better breakover angle. You can do 28 degrees. That's a little bit less than the old Defender, but it's more than the Discovery. Something like a Land Cruiser Prado can do 25 degrees. It's impressive. Now, if I wanted to be really lazy, I could use the all-terrain progress control, which is effectively cruise control off-road. So I'll just press this button down here, and then it'll ask me if I want to select it. So press set to set speed and it'll just do it for me. I don't have to control anything. It's really handy when you're on very slippy surfaces and you just want to chill out. Look, look, I'm doing absolutely nothing. The car is doing everything and I'm going up a steep slope. But I don't care because I'm in my Land Rover Defender and it's got all the mod cons I need to be an expert off-roader, even when I'm absolutely not one at all. <laughs> a chimp could drive this new Defender off-road. Be like, <laughs> anyway, enough of that. 
I think I'll have a little drive of it myself. Here comes a slope. Now, normally I press this button again to go into hill descent control, so the car will take me down the slope nice and safely, but no, I'm not going to. I'm gonna do all this myself, which means I'm gonna to have to operate the brake. And this is quite steep. I can't see what's going on. I can't see what's going on at all. Oh, there it is. This is quite unusual, actually. Doing something myself. I don't need to, I just want to. And that's the idea with this. All the electronics are there to help you out if you want them to, or you don't have to use them. It's up to you. Now, oh, now that's interesting. Oh, oh, oh. This is tricky. So one of the key things with off-roaders is the approach angle. When you come down a slope or you're going up a slope, you don't want to bottom out your chin on the floor. This has a really good approach angle for a modern off-roader. So it's 38 degrees. So that's better than the Discovery. It's better than a Jeep Wrangler and it is better than a Land Cruiser Prado. It is not as good as the old Defender, which was 49 degrees, but then that vehicle has no crash protection at the front. It's got a much shorter overhang. Now, the departure angle is the bit that matters when you come off the slope, so you don't ground out your back end as you're leaving the decline. Now, the one on this car is 40 degrees. That's better than the old Defender, and it's better than pretty much any other off-roader you can buy today. So you can get down steep slopes safely without damaging your expensive SUV. Now this looks a bit tricky. Oh, blimey neck. I, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's so stiff and tough, this thing. It can really take whatever you throw at it. It's just absolutely unstoppable. I tell you what, I'd like to get my mum to try this out because I reckon she could do it just as easily as me. Would you like to see that video? If you would, let me know in the comments box below. We'll make it happen. Finally, I want to check out the new Defender's wading capability. So here's a lovely water feature, and I'm going to go drive through it. Now, I have sensors in the door mirrors which can measure the depth of the water, and it's showing me on the screen here. And I can wade up to a depth of 0.9 of a metre, which is as much as any other off-roader can do. In fact, only Land Rovers can go that deep. The old Defender could only do half a metre. This is reading probably about 0.8 of a metre, which means the old Defender would have drowned. In fact, a Jeep Wrangler would drown in this much, and so would a Land Cruiser Prado. But I can keep going. In fact, I should give the car a bit of a wash off. Oh dear. I've just totally soaked my cameraman. He will not be happy with me at all. I'm sorry. I didn't know he was going to do that. It was too late. Are you all right? He's cross. What is that noise? Turns out that that screaming noise was because there was water on a pulley belt, but it's dried off now and gone away. So don't need to worry about that. Now let's talk about the design. So it's very, very simple, the look of this car. In fact, if you were to ask a child to draw a Land Rover Defender, they would just come up with this shape. I could draw this Land Rover Defender. Thing is though, when you get up close to it, it doesn't look as simple as it actually is. There's lots of surfacing going on. Reason for that is, if you just had purely flat body panels, it would look a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, sorry about that, Elon. Here at the back, there's some classic Defender design cues. So you've got a spare wheel attached to the tailgate, which is very flat and it's hinged at the side rather than at the top. Oh, look at that, but it's modern too, look. You can get it with soft clothes. So, oh no, it's too heavy for me to shut, but ah, oh, the car does it for me. It's also got these alpine lights there so you can stare up at the mountains that, that aren't here. It's classic. Here at the front, it doesn't seem quite so classic. If it didn't say Defender there, I probably wouldn't know. Yeah, it's got roundish headlights, but for me, that's the only thing that reminds me of the original Defender. In fact, it's very much got a face, this car. Can you see it? Look at it, it's eyes, nose, big old gob. Also, if you get it with the winch pack, you then get this black surround and it makes the car look like it's wearing a face mask. It's as though Land Rover predicted the pandemic. 
Here on the inside, there is also very little similarity to the old Defender, but that's a good thing. In the old car, the seating position was kind of really uncomfortable. It was like you're holding some extreme yoga pose. It took ages to get used to it. Whereas this one, perfect. It's very car-like. Then there's the quality of the materials. In the old car, it's like the plastic and the switches and stuff were made out of old recycled Lego bricks, whereas this is much better. So this is a nice rubberized material here. This is soft, fabric-y leatherette. This is squidgy on the dash. There's some textured material here. It's all very good, only the bits lower down feel cheap and they're not too bad, quite impressed. And you can tell that Land Rover are trying to turn Defender into a cool brand. So look at this, it says Defender there. It's almost like wearing a brand across your jumper, like a huge Burberry logo or something like that. And then they've done this thing where they've got like exposed screw heads there and you've got exposed metal there. I mean, that's all on purpose. It's like a kind of industrial art that you have in a flat, you know, when you have a brick wall in your flat in Shoreditch to look really cool, but it's all intentional and it does work. And then there's things that are just in here for functionality as well as design. Like, look at this. That's your integrated grab handle there, here as well. There's places to hold on to. It's all really well thought out, actually. I like it. If you regularly want to carry people in the back of your Land Rover Defender, you're going to need this 110 version because it has five doors and it's a bit longer than the three door 90 version. And as you can see, I have plenty of room. Look, loads of knee room, loads of head room. And because the floor is pretty much completely flat, if you need to carry three people across this seat, you can do. There's loads of room for everyone. It's quite comfy actually in the middle seat. You can even get this as a seven-seater, though it's not the biggest seven-seater. If you want a proper seven-seater from Land Rover, get a Discovery. In fact, click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my detailed video review of that car. Now, if you look at the floor, you'll probably notice that it's got rubberized floor mats and it's a plastic floor. That's really handy if you're traipsing around muddy fields quite often, like we have been today. However, if you're just going to be using your car for the school run or just normal commuting, like a lot of people actually will, you can get it with carpets. So that's good. This new Defender has an absolutely massive boot. So in terms of literage, you have 857 of them. By comparison, a BMW X5 has 645 liters. So yay, Britain. Now you might think that, oh, it's great that I can slide things straight out because there's no load lip, but isn't this all just a little bit too high, especially when I'm trying to lift stuff in? Don't worry, you can press a button and lower the car down and it's air suspension. Make it more manageable so you don't do your back in when you're hoiking stuff in and out. Yay, look, easy. In fact, if you look at the shape of it, it's nice and square, so it's easy to pack. And we're illustrating it with all our camera gear, which hasn't been packed quite so neatly as I'd like. Oh well. There are various other useful features like hooks to hang things off. And look down here, we have a proper three pin plug. And then some more tie down points there as well. All very sensible, a bit too sensible, but let's be a little bit stupid because this, kind of reminds me of part of the male anatomy. One of the most contentious things about this new Defender is the price. So it starts at 40 grand for the three door or 45 for this five door. This particular model I've got here with the options is 62 grand and you can spend over 80 grand on one, which is kind of insane. Now, if you wanna see how much money you can save on a new car, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow. Now I can forgive the Defender for being quite pricey because it is very well equipped. Even the entry level model gets this lovely new 10 inch touchscreen and it includes, look at this, surround view cameras, which is kind of cool. Of course, you've got climate control, which you control using these dials as well. And you get electrically operated seats as standard. The next level up is the S, which is what this car is. And then you get a leather steering wheel, leather gear selector, part leather seats with fabric as well. It's quite nice that. And a center console with armrest. So entry level cars don't have this. And what you have is just a space there so you can just whiz through in the back if you want to. Next is the SE, which includes keyless entry, an electric steering column, a 400 watt Meridian sound system with 10 speakers and a subwoofer, and this Land Rover's clear sight rear view camera. So that looks like a normal rear view mirror. But if I flick this switch, I'm actually getting a feed from a camera on the roof and it's displaying it on this digital screen. So even if you have tall people in the back seats or loads of luggage, you can still see behind you. See? Then there's the HSE, which has adaptive cruise control with lane keeping assist. And it also gets a panoramic sunroof on the 110 or a fabric roof on the 90. Finally, there's the Defender X, which has luxury items such as heated rear seats, wooden inserts in the center console and luxury headlining. In terms of engines, it's very simple really. There are two petrols. So one is a two litre four cylinder turbo with 300 horsepower, or there's a three litre six cylinder turbo with 400 horsepower. Then there's two diesels, 
both are two litre four cylinders, one with 200 horsepower or another one with 240 horsepower. Now, if you want to see which is the best engine and trim combination for this new Defender, click on the pop-out banner up there to see my perfect choice. I've built my ideal Defender. You can see what that is and check out the best offers on it through CarWow. This particular Defender is the 240 horsepower diesel and it's better to do 0 to 60 in 8.6 seconds, but will it really? Let's find out. So I've got my specialist timing gear down here. I'm gonna launch it, because this is what people do in Defenders, building up boost. Let's go. Come on. It's moving. It's definitely moving. <laughs> Not that quickly, but it's all right. So that was 60 miles an hour. Not to 60 in 9.1 seconds. And that was slightly uphill as well. Hmm, that was all right. This new Defender is built on an all new chassis from Land Rover and it's 10% stiffer than that on the far more expensive Range Rover. In fact, it's 10 times stiffer than the chassis on the old Defender. The air suspension on the car can monitor movements 500 times a second to keep you as comfy as possible, regardless of what surface you're driving on. You can get the car with an electrically operated, wait for it, come on, come out, don't be shy, tow bar. Now this car can actually tow three and a half tons, which is a lot of tons. This is a very practical car, so you can get it with rear seats which slide and recline. This one doesn't have it. But what I can show you is this, look, you have an armrest you can fold down, or the centre seat. You can fold down if you need to carry really long items, or you can fold down the back seats like that and think, oh no, that's a bit of a step. But don't worry, look at this. You can flip this base out, take off, come on the headrest <laughs> then when you fold this down it does lie flat thank god for that there's plenty of cubby spaces in here as well so storage under there you can have that Cubby spaces are really good in here, so you've got some storage under there, and you can have that as a fridge. There's cup holders here, more storage here. The glove box is only okay, but it doesn't really matter because you've got all this space up here, more space here. Huge door bins as well, look at that, they're big. And then you've got these airplane style folders in the seat backs, and decent sized door bins as well for the rear passengers. Let's talk technology. It's pretty good on this car, actually. The new infotainment system is fairly simple to navigate. I like the graphics as well. They're nice and sharp, and the screen is reasonably responsive. I also like the digital driver's display. It's quite easy to work your way through it, and you can cycle through different menus and move through all different screens, just as you like it. However, I don't think it's quite as good as that in a Mercedes GLE. In fact, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can see my full in-depth video review of that car. However, this Defender does have the Mercedes lick for connectivity, so you've got plenty of USB connectors here there's one there and the USB-C there as well as the old-fashioned 12 volt another USB port there then there's some more connectivity down here look at all this there's a whole bank of them everybody is going to be able to keep their mobile device fully charged now then it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car while you can get the 90 version on core springs you can only get the 110 on air suspension which is kind of good, but kind of bad if you're doing lots of trail driving because you can take out your air suspension if you suddenly lose a sensor and then you can't drive, whereas if you've got coil springs, that ain't a problem. The smallest wheel size you can get on the new Defender is 18 inches, which isn't ideal if you're a hardcore off-roader. You'd like a slightly smaller size so that then you have more tyre sidewall so that when you let your tyres down, you can increase the footprint by quite a lot. And that's really important when you're driving on sand. I don't know why Land Rover's interior department didn't manage to get these seat back pockets to actually match the colour of the back of the seat. Surely it's not that hard? There's no doubt that this car is a proper off-roader, so then why didn't Land Rover manage to make the doors cover the whole of the sill? This last bit is exposed, which means that when you're getting in and out, you're going to rub your trousers on that and get more dirty like I have. And they should know about these things. It's, it's their business. Land Rovers aren't known for their reliability, so while well, it doesn't really matter so much if you're using this car for the school run, you don't want to be breaking down if you're venturing into the outback. Yeah, you might want to rely more on a Toyota than one of these. Just saying. That's coming from a Brummy as well. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. 
This car's roof rack can take up to 168 kilos when you're driving along. When you're stationary, it can cope with 300 kilos, which means you can actually mount a specific two-man Land Rover tent on there and just camp out in the Serengeti away from all the lions. You can use the car's 4x4 information screen to measure angles of slopes. So I'm going on a side slope and I'm measuring it at 24 degrees. That's impressive. Now, if that number reads 180 degrees, you know things have gone very badly wrong. The load cover is a really neat fabric design because it will cover up your luggage, but it's also super easy to remove and it doesn't take up any space because look at this. You can damage your cameras while trying to illustrate part of the car. Brilliant. Look, you can just fold it up like that. It's dead good. Or you can wear it, look at that, as a sarong, which is basically a man's skirt. You can get lots of different accessory packs depending on what you want to do with your Defender. There's one called the off-road pack, which moves the air intake for the engine, which is normally there, up there, which is handy if you're driving in very dusty environments. You can also get something which is like a portable shower for the boot, so you can have a nice shower when you're just out in the countryside camping. You can get an optional winch pack for about £5,000 and you can control it remotely. Look at that. Yeah, come to me. Come on. Really handy if you've got yourself stuck. Obviously, we're not stuck here, just doing a demonstration. Now it's time to find out what this new Defender is like to drive on road. And let's start by testing it in town, because after all, this is where most people are going to be driving it rather than off road. The first thing I like about it is the air suspension. Now, air suspension is a bit like the automotive equivalent of Valium, because it just makes everything all soft and floaty and relaxed. And then it's like speed umps. Yeah, whatever. Takes the sting out of pottering around badly surfaced British roads. Then there's a the steering. That's super light as well. Makes it easy to manoeuvre. You've got good visibility because you're sat up high. There's some huge door mirrors. There is just one thing that's a bit odd, and it's the brakes. They're electrically assisted. When you touch them, they come on really hard. I mean, the car behind me almost went into the back of me. Here we go again. So all oh, traffic lights. It's like I can't drive. Now, it does take a while to get used to, but once you get used to it, you are just more gentle on the pedal. Other than that, this is super easy to drive in town. One thing that's not so good though is the rear visibility because of that spare wheel. I really can't see the car behind me. When you get out on a faster road, this is so much better than the old Defender. It feels like a luxurious SUV. You get a bit of noise from the off-road tyres, but I'm sure if you've got road tyres on it, it's going to be quieter. It's chilled, comfy, relaxing. Let's see what it's like at kicking down a gear if I need to overtake, so I'm doing 44 miles an hour. Floor it. A bit slow, but now we're going. That's quick enough. It's not going to help the economy doing that though. So this one's averaging 24.8 miles per gallon. Should do about 31 miles per gallon. The reason it's probably so low is because I've been off-roading all day and that does affect your fuel economy. So it's all right, I guess. Now let's see what this new Defender's like when you encounter some corners. The old one was rubbish. This one is actually really good. Now it's not sporty really because the steering is a bit vague which absolutely no one who buys this will care about. But I've got to do my job as a motoring journalist and assess its dynamic prowess. And I would say that a BMW X5 does feel sportier, which you imagine it would do. Anyway, if you want to see my in-depth review of a BMW X5, click on the Bob Out banner up there. But here's a corner right now that the old Defender and some other SUVs would really struggle with. But whoop, yeah, fine, went round. No one died, didn't go off the road, all good. That's all you need to know. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Land Rover Defender? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon if you're looking for a really cool looking, comfortable, nice to drive, and incredibly capable off-roader, you should just go right ahead and buy it. It's brilliant. We've been trying to film the new Defender and do pieces to camera, but I'm getting disturbed by this guy. Come on, come on, Mr. Turkey. He was all aggressive earlier, putting up his feathers. He's, uh, oh, no, it's com it's coming after me. <laughs> I can't believe I've just been chased off by a turkey. <laughs>